Well, howdy everybody. Like you said, I'm Professor Bosenbark, or better yet, just Margaret Bosenbark. Um, I do work here at the College of Nursing for Texas A&M, but you didn't come here to hear about me. You came here to hear about my topic, right? Half for the hungry. Well, first I have a question for you. I want to know what you think a group of A&M students, a dumpster, and a homeless man in Las Vegas have in common. Pretty, pretty hard to come up with maybe a commonality, except for we've got people, right, involved. We've got cities and we've got waste. Okay, well, that's not what I see. Okay, when I see this, I see food. Maybe not something you see, but that would be me. So let's all talk about food for a second. First off, we have you and I, people that woke up this morning. We were hungry and we maybe got to the coffee pot or hot tea, whatever your pleasure, right? We ended up making ourselves something to eat, we ate it, we felt good about it, we weren't concerned about getting more of that substance. If that ran out, we could just run down to the HEB and get some more, right? So we would be those food secure people here in America today, right? Well, let's step back then, who are the food insecure? Well, that would be people that live in this town, right? Who eat, and when they eat, they do so with fear. Right? They're not terrified in the corner eating a piece of bread, but certainly in their mind plays in the reality that they may not be able to replace that piece of bread. They don't know when they're going to eat again, and they don't know when they're going to replace the food that they do eat, and so they, they live in a constant state of rationing, if you will. Then we have these people in this yellow category, right? This acute crisis, these people that really don't have access to food. This would be what you and I would call the homeless and the hungry, live on the streets, right? This is that category. Well, we're gonna talk about them today, right? The bottom categories we're not talking about today, so sorry about that, we can do that at another time. Now, lest you think that this is something that doesn't involve America and doesn't involve an important group in America, I would like to pause and have this conversation. That's about hunger and children in our country, right? See, growing up, you know, you watch the, the uh, news footage of people in famine, right? People that literally have nothing. It's not um, an estimate or an exaggeration. It's reality. And so aid and relief come to them, right? They get, they get food, at least we hope, okay? Um, but here in the States, what does hunger look like? It might look very different. You may have crossed paths with these people every day and never known it, right? 16 million or one in five children here in our country today struggle with hunger. It's not that they don't have food. They seem to live in these food insecure homes. So they're not getting what we would call a complete portion size or a complete meal because again, they're having to ration, right? These children, you say to me, but Margaret, listen, we've got programs for them. And you're right, we do. And they're doing great things, right? We've got the free lunch programs where 20 million children a day participate in this country in these programs. And I'm grateful that we as a country have made that a priority. About half of those children don't participate in where they could get breakfast as well. So now we've got kids that we think have access to two great meals a day that really only have access to one. They're hungry. That means our future, the people that are gonna be taking care of me and doing these TED Talks generations from now, right? They can't think and process in the classroom because they're hungry, right? They're not getting nutrition that they need. They're not being able to fill their bellies and so their minds then become empty because I don't know about you, but if I don't eat, right? The popular phrase nowadays, what is we get all hangry, right? We can't actually interact with each other well and we can't treat one another right because we're hungry. These people, that's their life. Hmm. Okay, well now that we've established that's a real problem, let's move back to my original question. What do Texas A&M students know about food insecurity or true hunger? Well, I was that Texas A&M student, proudest member of the Fight in Texas A class of 2005, Woo! right? And uh, no, I didn't know what hunger was because my mom and dad, they bought me a meal plan and I got to eat every day with Linda the card lady at Sabisa, right? And the frozen novelties, praise God, right? Um, so I didn't know what it was to be hungry. If I was hungry, I went on campus and I ate, right? So what did I do? Well, I signed up with a group of friends and we went to Waco, Texas, and well, what did we do there? We wanted to know what it felt like to be poor, 
right? Because you can't really truly understand poverty and hunger until you yourself live in that situation. So what did we do? We showed up and they said, give us all your belongings. And we said, you're kidding? They said, no, no. Everything you have on, you may keep your underwear. Everything else, give to us. And we're going to give you clothes from a thrift store, like Goodwill or a mission shop. We're going to give you shoes that kind of fit your feet, right? And you're going to get to live now on the streets of Waco for a weekend and go find food if you're hungry. Go find shelter if you need it. See how that works out for you. And so we did. So imagine, right, one of these precious, or myself, right, here we go, out to this lovely setting. By the way, it's February, and this February, Texas did what it was supposed to do, and it had a winter, right? And so we, it was 33 degrees, 32 degrees, the shelters would open, and we'd be allowed to sleep inside, but not, be, you know, because I was there, it was 33, right? So 33 degrees, and did I tell you it was sleeting? <laughs> Of course it was, right? Sweet little comfortable Bryan College Station, you know, Margaret goes out there and I do this, right? And so we found the best cardboard um, behind a church. Um, so it at least gave us some protection from the ground so the earth wasn't, you know, taking our heat. And we slept there that night. We woke up in the morning and what do we normally do? We go look for our coffee. Whew. There was no coffee to be had, friends, and so I got a little cranky. And then there was no food when we got hungry, and they said, if you want it, go find it. I said, okay. So what did I do? I found a dumpster. But you guys, see, my perspective had started to change already in this dumpster. It was not just any dumpster. This dumpster that I found was an oven. And do you know what was baking inside fresh for me because the sun was shining down like a beam from heaven, heating this metal, you know, container full of trash. But do you know where this dumpster was located? Behind a Shipley's. So guess what was in the dumpster? <laughs> donuts, people. Donuts, right? So the only thing that separated that dumpster from my oven back home was the context, right? Because I dove straight into that dumpster because I was small enough at the time to be able to get through this little opening. They had chained the lid shut, right, to keep people like me out, right, the hungry. So here I go, getting into there, and I grab out boxes of donuts. I got all the chocolate glazed ones, and I wasn't sharing with you. And here I was stuffing my face because I had found food, right? So in that moment, I realized the only difference between me, my whole life, and people that this is their whole life is I had access to food my whole life, and they haven't. That's the only difference. In that moment, I was just a hungry human. And guess what? They're just hungry people, right? So instead of having to categorize and say, oh, there, there's that poor person. No, that's just a human that likes to drink coffee just like you do. That's a human that likes to have water that eat, just like you do. They like to eat food just like you do. And so here I was going, wow, the only thing different is food and access to food. And I finally realized this hunger problem, it's not a food problem. It's not a food problem. It's a food distribution problem. You see, instead of repurposing and redistributing the leftovers from the day before, they were immediately deemed trash. See, one minute before, when the shop was still open, they were goods for sale. But as soon as the shop closes, now they are to be put in the trash. But I was just a block or two away, laying on cardboard, hungry and wanting breakfast. OK. so. What does Las Vegas have to do with any of this? Well, I'll tell you. Many years later, right, I find myself working for Texas A&M, grateful to be here and doing research at this great institution. I go to Las Vegas to present that research in nursing, and it's a great conference. We're having a great time. We're doing the conference thing, and my husband um, came with me on this particular trip, and so we were excited to be able to, you know, go and have dinner at nice restaurants and do the things, and then all of a sudden, this is all I could see. See, such need, such poverty shoved right up against such excess. And you see, everybody kept asking me when I got home, Margaret, didn't you love Vegas? Isn't it so much fun? Did you go to the shows and like go to all these places and see all these cool things? And I said, no. All I could see was this. Such need right on the doorstep of such excess. And what you 
should already know about me now that you know that I went to Texas A&M is, well, we have core values, and one of those is respect. And we are taught at Texas A&M that we are to respect all comers. Someone comes into my sphere of influence, I am to respect them simply because they exist. Right? So I'm, I don't understand. The very next thing that I came to my mind was, what about selfless service? I mean, aren't I supposed to serve anyone around me regardless of why they are in need? Aren't I just supposed to serve them? Well, I couldn't figure it out, and I got real angry, and I got real emotional, as any good southern white girl does. What do you do when you get emotional and angry? You eat, right? Okay, well, my husband knows that's the best way to get me to calm down, right? Feed me, okay? So here I am, we go to Vegas, right? We're out in this restaurant now. We order two meals, and, and I didn't really understand fully the portion size problem in Las Vegas. But when you order one meal, you get enough food to feed your whole family, really, okay? But why do that? You're in Las Vegas, you're supposed to live it up. So we each order a meal and, well, the food just keeps coming and we're full by the end of the appetizers, right? Which most people are, okay? And now we have all this food left. So here I am, angry, because I've just walked by all these hungry people, and here I am with all this food, and I know I'm going back to Caesar's Palace, and Caesar's might be great, but they don't have a big enough refrigerator to hold the leftovers. So what did I ask for? To-go boxes. Why not, right? So I asked for a ton of to-go boxes. I said, waitress, sweetheart, I'm going to need as many to-go boxes as you can bring me, but for each one, I want a bag, and for each bag, I want silverware, and for each silverware, I want napkins. Because see, back when I was doing the thing in Waco, that would have been a lifeline for me. Napkins, something I can feel human and wipe my fingers off. So I was like, we're doing it, right? So we packed up all the food and we just started walking. And we handed it out to the first person we saw that was in need. We didn't ask for an explanation. We just fed them. One person said to me, Margaret, I'm not a, I'm not a, a beggar. He said, I don't, I don't need your pity, I'm a performer. I said, great, you perform for me. So my husband and I stood there. The man performs us his song. I say, I'd like to pay you for your art. Here's a meal. What he couldn't understand is why the ribs were still hot. I said, well, sir, did you want a hot meal? I thought you might enjoy that. He said, I, yeah, right, and he eats it. Okay, so, so we've got this concept, right, of, Let's share what we don't really need to hang on to, right? How many times have you taken leftovers home with the good intentions of eating it the next day and then you open it up and it's, it's got this weird look about it and you're like, I don't really know if I'm gonna eat that, right? And it ends up in the trash and, and everybody's like, oh, well, at least I tried. I thought, I've had good thoughts, right? I didn't waste the food, but we really did, right? So there's people all around us in this town today that could be fed with that food. So why not? The next time that we all go out to eat, instead, wouldn't it be great if everyone did that? Wouldn't it be great if everyone said, I need a to-go box, and we get it at the beginning of the meal. Not just the dieters that are worried about their waistline, but we could get it at the beginning of the meal. We could replate some of that food, and then we could go give it to the hungry. But you're saying to me, Margaret, I don't know where they are. We in Bryan College Station do a good job of, well, segregating out, right? City planning or zoning. So we don't really know where they are. They're here, I promise. What if there was an organization, Half for the Hungry, or better yet, probably better named, Half for the Human, right? Half for Humanity, right? What if the, there was a group, an organization, a way, a program that you could participate in, you go to eat at Olive Garden, and you sit down and you got a ton of food, and you know you're not gonna finish it all, and you say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna participate for Half for the Hungry. And we took half of your food before you ever saw it. And we replated it and made it look beautiful. You never even miss that other half, I promise you. Right? But the family that gets to eat it, they will never forget it. Right? What if we change the way that we view food? What if we incentivized giving that food away, redistributing it, and it could no longer go in the dumpster? What if we said to cafeterias and hospitals and schools around our city, all leftovers will be redistributed to the hungry instead of thrown away? What if every grocery store could no longer throw away day old or day, you know, one date over the expiration, right? What if they had to redistribute that to those that were truly hungry that needed it? See, it's not a food problem, people. 
It's a food distribution problem. See, we don't distribute it to those unless they can gain access to it. Why? That's so silly, right? I guarantee you, if we rethought about hunger, we rethought about food and what we should do with it, the world would start looking a lot more like this. Now those children in the classroom can focus on the teacher. Now those adults working two and three jobs could stay awake on the job because they have food in their belly. Because you see, I'm a mom of four, and if I'm hungry and my kids are hungry, who's going to eat? Not me. But I still got to go show up for work because I got to pay the rent, right? But what if we fed them? What if we just redistributed it? What if we had half for humanity, right? It's an amazing thought. I think we can do it. We need to come together, right? This cannot be a time that we say, well, it's the haves and the haves nots. It's those people that get access by money or those people that have to go around to the back and get their hand out by the dumpster. See, that's not acceptable to me, right? Because when you see those people laying there in the street, I don't care what life decision put them there, right? I don't care what things and stories and programs that they should apply for. What I care about is that person's hungry and I have four different to-go boxes for my dinner and I'm going to go take it to them. One thing I did, the next conference I went to, I was in uh, Breckenridge, Colorado, and um, that's kind of a, you know, a touristy place, and we, I, I had done my thing, I had presented my research, and I was walking around, and yes, there were people hungry, there were homeless people there, and um, there was this one particular brother um, duo, and they each had a really amazing dog, um, and uh, they were kind of walking around musicians, right, that did their thing, and I told my colleagues I was with, I said, hey, all of our leftovers here, let's box them up because I know people that want them. And they kind of give you the face, right? Like, really, Margaret? I'm like, no, really. So we went and we found these brothers. And what was so amazing about this moment, the brothers each took a couple bites. And what did they do? They fed their dogs. You see, it's not just about humans, right? It's about all of us living together, sharing this space that we call earth and being responsible about it, right? No longer saying, well, I'm over here and you're over there, but we are hungry. What if there was half for humanity or half for the hungry? What if we rethought food and it couldn't be trash anymore? Thank you.